My name is Sky Nelson, and I'm going to give a very abbreviated version of a talk I gave last weekend at the Science and Non-Duality Conference. This is called A Theory of Consciousness as the Source of Physics. The question is, is there a connection between physics and consciousness, and can perennial wisdom provide guidance for us? Perennial wisdom is the core of truth at the center of all mystical tra traditions, and uh, we don't know exactly what that is, but I'll put it this way. There is one unified entity in existence, the self, which perceives the world itself through localized perspectives, individually, separately, one at a time. And remember that sentence, because we're going to use that over and over again in this talk. So break it into two parts. First, there is one uni unified entity in existence, the self. Second, which perceives the world itself through localized perspectives, individually, one at a time. We're going to use that to derive some physics principles. So let's start here. In the upper right you see there is one unified entity in existence, the self. In physics, I'm going to call that the, the non-physical realm of information, uniform in its information content, which is the foundation of all physical effects. And the second part, up in the upper right, is going to be reconstructed as, when constructing a meaningful description of the physical realm, it is necessary to restrict oneself to a single framework or perspective and not mix the results of multiple frameworks. Now both of those are present in physics, um, so let's discuss a little further the information realm, the first principle. So using the Fourier transform, or at least some generalized transform, we can remove space and time from the equations that describe objects. So here's an example of uh, an object in the top <coughs> graph that's just a block sitting there and its position. And the frequency spectrum is on the second graph, and the phase of those frequencies is on the bottom graph. Now it turns out that there's a unique representation of each physical object and its position in space based on the frequency and the phase. And if you notice, the phases are what changed when you move the object because the phase is a direct one-to-one -one mapping with the uh, configuration of the objects on the screen. If I had a second object, I actually do change the frequency spectrum because I've now got a different set of uh, physical matter. Um, the energy spectrum is now different. And of course, the phases also change. <coughs> the short version of that is that uh, if you re remove space and time from the equation by doing a, some kind of transform like the Fourier transform, you find uh, a realm of information which represents all of physical reality. But since space and time are removed, that realm of information is omnipresent. In other words, there's no relationship to space or time, and so anything that exists in the information realm is present everywhere, um, or accessible everywhere. And it's a unified, undifferentiated whole. So if there's no physical uh, extent or time, you know, no space or time in this representation, anything in the information realm is unified, undifferentiated whole. And it turns out that light is the perfect example of uh, this, of an entity that lives in the information realm. And uh, just to give you a quick example of how light in its basic properties obeys uh, Fourier analysis, if you take a, um, a set of bright and dark bands on the left and pass them through a lens, the lens will perform a Fourier transform on that light, and you end up with a, uh, a positive frequency and a negative frequency in the, the three dots on the right. We can go into that in more detail at another time. So the information realm. Is information about what? Well, <clears throat> it's information about possibilities. And just as in quantum mechanics, exactly as in quantum mechanics, we have uh, possibilities of uh, superpositions. Uh, that's exactly what the information realm is showing, it is containing all the possibilities that quantum mechanics conveys for us. Um, you're familiar with the two-slit experiment, or you should be. And this is just to convey that what the two-slit experiment says is that there are certain possible outcomes that are more likely than others at the bottom of the screen. And you get bright spots with the more possible outcomes and dark spots with the less possible outcomes. And so it's not so much just an interference pattern of, of waves, but an uh, interference pattern of possible outcomes. And of course, omnipresent possibilities, what does that imply? Well, it implies uniform. If, it, if an entity exists in some omnipresent or it's in some uh, non-spatial realm, then it must be accessible everywhere in that space. In other words, uniform. But the possibilities are uniform in information content, not uniform in information expression. That's a very key point. Uniform in information content, essentially, as an analogy, would mean you can pray from anywhere in the, in the world and still get uh, you know, whatever efficacy results you get, but in, for, irregardless of location. But the expression in the physical form of what is possible is limited by the Fourier or the information realm, much like DNA is in your body. So DNA exists throughout your body in exactly the same form, but the expression of that DNA is very different in your liver from in your eyes or your hair. 
and in the same way the information realm is uh, ubiquitous and available to us everywhere from all locations in an equal way, but the phase of the information realm determines what unique possibilities we can access or can be expressed in a given time and space. So not every single possibility is, is accessible or creatable in a moment. And using this approach, we would say that a measurement of the information realm involves a Fourier transform, which converts us from omnipresence to a single definite result in space-time. Now I'm going to derive special relativity from these principles. So in the upper right, we have the original statement in the, in the perennial wisdom, there is one unified entity in existence, the self. And this is the information realm, which is timeless. So delta t prime equals zero in any kind of measurement that could be made of the information realm. But if you convert that via the Lorentz transformation at the bottom to uh, to uh, a, a reference frame which is inertial or uh, stationary or moving in space and time, um, you get C equals L over T, which is a very trivial result that just says that the amount of time and, and space in between two events in the physical realm would always be connected or, or limited by the speed C, the speed of light. And that's the second postulate of the special, re of special relativity. Now the second statement in the perennial wisdom is which perceives the world itself through localized perspectives individually one at a time. And that's essentially postulate one of special relativity. All reference frames are equal. If, if the uh, oneness is perceiving itself through, equal, through various reference frames, it would all have to be by symmetry essentially equal. Now I'm going to try and derive quantum mechanics. Uh, again, there is one unified entity in existence, the self, in red. And the statement here is that in physics, the, the information realm fundamentally allows for superpositions of possibilities because it's a linear transform. So s quantum superposition falls easily into, quantum, into the Fourier transforms. In fact, they're part of it in quantum mechanics. And <clears throat> what we find is that if you have one physical object on the left, and there's the representation in Fourier space in the bottom two graphs on the left, and two physical superimposed objects on the right have the same Fourier transform in terms of frequency spectrum, but different phase relationship. Whereas if you have two physical objects that are separate on the left, you have a different frequency spectrum. And so you get some, u some unique uh, situations where uh, there's a very sp specific difference between one superimposed physical object and two separate physical objects. The point here is that the Fourier realm wraps, uh, maps perfectly one-to-one -to, -one to each possible configuration of physical space and time. It's a unique mapping. And uh, to further derive quantum mechanics, we use the second statement in the upper right in red, which perceives the world itself through localized perspectives. And perception of, local, of reality through localized perspectives is essentially the view of relational quantum mechanics, that a quantum mechanical measurement is only relevant to a particular point of view. And uh, we can also state it through the single framework rule from consistent history's quantum mechanics. The single framework rule says that uh, you must always take a single framework or a single perspective when examining any physical situation in order to avoid paradoxes. So these are fundamental pieces of qu existing quantum theory that are easily achievable through the, uh, the perennial wisdom we stated earlier. The conclusion I would say is we are information. Our source is a realm of information. We are the physical uh, expression of that source of a realm of information. That realm of information is the realm of consciousness. Now I haven't shown that in any way, but that is a proposal that would be made from this presentation. I think that there is uh, likely a connection between that information realm and consciousness. And the realm of information or consciousness gives rise to the physical realm. So by the either the Fourier transform or some more generalized transform, we get physical outcomes of experiments through a transform from the information realm into this physical realm. And here's some uh, references, including my book due out in 2015 called What are the Chances? Science, Serendipity, and Seizing the Moment. Thank you for listening. You can find more information at www.skynelson.com.